Hi there, welcome friend, welcome to Home Keepers. Come right on in, how are you doing today? It's just uh, so wonderful to be able to come into your home or wherever, you might be watching us on a telephone somewhere. Uh, it's amazing, you know, you carry these little devices around and, and keep up with everything. It's kind of an exciting time, isn't it? But whatever the situation is, I'm glad to be here with you and I'm so happy that you're here with us. Uh, I think a very important program Home keepers. We try to really cover a lot of ground, a lot of material uh, to make your life better and to keep you informed. And that's kind of the guest we have today. If you watch regularly, you've met Heidi Janssen and she has this passion for education. Um, I wish every child had a mother like Heidi that stays on top of the education of her two children. Boy, it would be a different world if uh, you really knew what was going on in the schools and on their lives and you were helping them facilitating, you know, with their homework and all, uh, it's so important. And I'm glad the Lord brought her to this uh, program. And she's uh, very knowledgeable uh, as to how school boards run, Common Core and all of these things that you hear a lot about in the news. And uh, they are in the newspapers too, for sure. Uh, changes constantly in our educational system. So Heidi's here and... Um, we're going to make pizza in a bowl. And I, I remember a show with uh, Stephanie just not too long ago. We were saying, where did this recipe come from? She says, probably in some mother's kitchen. And she tried this and this and this. And I think Stephanie's right on that. And I'll bet you this happened the same way. So if you love the taste of pizza and all, this goes into a bowl with some pasta. Makes sense, doesn't it? So we'll fix that for you. After I again tell you that we can still offer Stephanie's necklace. Uh, you regular viewers know that Stephanie in the last year has had a cancer battle and she won. She has won, praise God. And so when I saw this necklace, I thought we need to dedicate this to her. I, I've always loved that ribbon, that pink ribbon, and it, it just speaks perfect. So uh, you can see it there, how pretty it is for $25. You can use your credit card. That 800 number is at the bottom there, 1-800-229-0059. Or the, if you want to write to us, send a check. Make sure the check's at least $25. That helps keep us on the air. And that address is Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. So how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. It's smelling good. Yes. Thank you so much for the necklace. I love it. Uh-huh. And uh, we sent your mama one, didn't yes. we? Yes. She was thrilled with it. Yeah, very good. I, I think we mentioned before that uh, Stephanie's mother's a nurse and how going through cancer, it's a mixed blessing. Right, when you have a little too much knowledge, you know? Yeah. 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 Okay, so I have a three-quarter yeah. um, pound of hamburger mm -hmm. in here. I'm going to put some onion in here. We're going to saute it. This recipe, you know, it's summer. Kids are off from school. Uh huh. This would be a perfect, you have all those teenagers to feed. Yeah. This is the perfect recipe for this. Uh, anything pizza. Anything, and it's frugal, and it's going to make a lot. And I'm cutting up pepperoni. I meant to look up on the uh, internet this morning before I came out to see what's in pepperoni, but maybe I don't want to know. You probably, sometimes <laughs> ignorance is bliss. Sometimes it's better not to know. I, I keep, <laughs> oh shoot, well, I'll try to do that sometime, you know. That's like after I found out how they grew mushrooms, I didn't eat them for a while. So I think that really? maybe sometimes you just don't want to know. Things. Ignorance is bliss. Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> do you want to tell us how they grow no, mushrooms? No, I don't, thank you. I'm curious now. Google it. No. <laughs> <laughs> I Mr. saw it on Google. a show called Dirty Jobs. <clears throat> oh. Yeah. Well, I'm not overly in love with mushrooms, so. I like them. Yeah. But. Okay, so you're going to want to let the saute a lot longer. Yeah. You're going to want the, yeah. the onions to get a lot softer. But we're going to move forward because we want to get to Heidi. We love Heidi. Yeah, we love Heidi. Okay, so hamburger and onions. And then we have a can of pizza sauce. Yes. That we're going to put in there. I bet you there was some innovative mother who did this. I am sure of it. I think this is a brilliant idea. Yeah. Just see how it tastes. Yeah. That's and then here's the interesting the ingredient to me. Yes. It's cream of mushroom soup. Yes. So I thought she must have had a can of that in and it. And thought, you know what? Let's mushrooms, pizza. Yeah. Let's throw it in. And we're not going to talk about how they're raised. Not right at this moment. <laughs> okay. So we're just going to let this heat up. Yeah. Let's let it cook a little bit. I almost would add a little bit of water to this. Yeah. Do you want a little? Yeah. I'll put a little in this can. Yes, please. That would be good. Um, well, here, you can put as much as you want in. Thank you. 
Yeah, just a little. I think it just needs a little, yeah, there, there we go. Nice. Okay. Okay, so this will just heat up. <clears throat> the noodles we already cooked earlier, since mm -hmm. we're on a time crunch. Let's go ahead and throw the pepperonis in. Okay. Such a, this is a really a cost-effective, great recipe, because this will feed a lot. Well, this, this whole pizza flavor is what the kids like. Yes, well, and I'm taking some home to my husband for dinner, so. <laughs> Hope you like it. Because tonight is, we have leftover night every once in a while, and I have a few leftovers to yeah. feed them, and I thought, well, along with the leftovers, I'll take them a little pizza. Tim is the gift from home keepers. Yes. Yeah, okay, let's throw the noodles in. Mm hmm This rigatoni. Rigatoni, and you can, of course, use any. This will be a good one to get the sauce <clears throat> all over them, but you can use anything you have in your cabinet. That's what I love about pasta. There's so many oh, yeah. different shapes and... So we just need one minute for this to oh, heat yeah. up. and Mix it up good. Yeah. It smells really good. And then we're going to put cheese over the top of it. It's pizza in a bowl. Seriously. Yep. And I'm really smart mama. I think it'd be really interesting. Not that a smart daddy could do it. To know the background of these yeah. recipes. Yeah. Yeah. I want to know the background <laughs> to the recipe we did yesterday. <laughs> We did a recipe yesterday that, I mean, she was almost hateful about it. She yeah. just did not like it. Some people are not going to be happy that I spit it out into the garbage. But <laughs> <laughs> I really, but but Arthlane liked it, I and then the guests it. tried it, and they... The crew liked it, the, the well, ones that did it. really? Well, they like everything. Not really. Okay. Not really, take that it, back. It but, was just uh, one I could Dan, not... Dan, you came back again and got some, didn't you? Yeah, he, see. Okay, he I just, it just didn't sit yeah. with me right. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Had to have it on the bun, he said. Yeah. Yes. They'll know exactly which one I'm you, talking well, about. Well, it was called... Uh, it was Sloppy Joe's. Some kind of sloppy... Salsa. Salsa. It had the salsa in it. That's what gave it the kick that probably... And the, well, and tomato soup. I, so I called Arthlene later. I said, okay, here's the new rule. If we're not making tomato soup, let's not make any recipes that require tomato soup in <laughs> She was having a hissy over a I don't think I was soup. having a hissy, but... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Mm. I'm that is, and look how much it made. I mean, this is a great recipe. I think this recipe. will be a family pleaser. Yes. Mm. Mm -hmm. Does it taste like pizza? Flavor, yeah. Yeah. Very flavorful. Good. And I hope Dave likes it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, I'll recommend this one. And um, you know what you need? All you need is a green salad with it. And it's very hearty. Yeah. It's called pizza in a bowl, and I, I would give it two thumbs up easily. Um, innovative and very, very flavorful. So if you want the recipe coming up, you can email us, and we'll email it right back. And uh, if you don't have that, just write to me. Send me an envelope with your name and address on it and a stamp, and we'll get it right back to you. And if you haven't met Heidi Janssen... <laughs> Wonder what Janssen is really. Right. <laughs> we love uh, her. She looks like it too. She looks mm -hmm. like a. I'll ask her. I, she looks like a beauty kind of queen. Swedish, yeah, too. Yeah. Uh, anyway, if you haven't met her, you're going to love her. Information is coming up on your screen, and we'll get right to the subject of education, one of the most important subjects we could ever tackle. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may send your email request to artheline at rippy.org, or you may write to us at the address on your screen, and in doing so, please include a self-addressed stamped envelope. We thank you for being a part of our Homekeepers family. Well, welcome back. This is Heidi, if you haven't met her. It's been, it's been a while. We've really yeah, juggled our um, schedules back and forth. And I speculated that you were Swedish because you sure look it. But that is your married name. So. That is. My husband's family, um, in their history, has some Swedish. And his dad is German. His mother's from Finland. And my mom is German. So we both speak German. Mm -hmm. And we speak it to our children. Really? Do you speak it? Yeah. I grew oh. up speaking. You know... Uh, this is way off the subject, but as we are talking right now, our president, Trump, and his wife are in France. France. And she speaks five languages. I believe it. 
um, at the at the G20 thing a few days ago, they put her next to Vladimir Putin, and she conversed in Russian. Russian. Oh, and, and today she's speaking to them in French. Um, I think that is just highly commendable because I don't do real well with one language. <laughs> and, uh, it's just it's just hard for me to wrap my brain around five languages. You know? Well, you know, America traditionally. Um, was not immersed in mm -hmm. that culture of learning. Other languages. Than, yeah, maybe Spanish because that's what our borders are. But mm -hmm. um, you, you have a lot of people in Canada who speak French only. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. that didn't seem to rub off on us. Well, I'm glad to have you back. Thank you. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, charter schools and also if we can get to it, uh, Common Core. Um, the newspapers are full of stuff yes, about schools today. And um, let's, let's start out with the charter schools. There's one, in, a Mason Academy in Naples that has moved. They, they left the Common Core thing. I, I believe this is a charter school, but they, they forsook Common Core. They're the number one school in Florida today. Hmm. Okay, if they're a true charter, though, they still have to adhere to whatever their district is doing uh, as far as mm -hmm. testing. And, you know, the Florida Standards Assessment is the assessment that is required mm -hmm. by every student third grade on to take mm -hmm. and the Florida standards are common that's core. common core now what uh, you're more deeply into education than I am substitute teacher and I I'd like to see her higher up in the whole educational system myself but What, first of all, what is a charter school and what is your opinion of them? Okay, so a lot of people think that charter schools are private schools. Mm -hmm. What they are is public schools that are privately run. Mm -hmm. So just as in any basket of apples, you might get one great apple and you might get a right. whole bunch that are not great. Mm -hmm. So just to explain, what it did was it opened up public education to the free world as a um, part of capitalism. So you, can, you have seen in the news that there are charter schools that are financially not managed well or that the owners of these charter chains, nationwide charter chains, which, which is recently, mm -hmm. um, have taken full advantage of the fact that they are taking in tax dollars. They've purchased homes, they've paid credit cards, they've lived the luxurious life, all on our tax dollars. Are there no restrictions on Well, that? there are, but you know what? The school districts are not on top of them, man, and, and they're not they're not under a microscope so there's a lot of latitude these mm -hmm. charter schools can take so you could have a Christian charter school however um, they still have to adhere to the state mandates mm -hmm. to the district guidelines as far as testing goes and mm -hmm. they still have to teach the standards mm -hmm. but then everything else is is up to them so they have a, a private board of directors mm -hmm. that is not the school board um, there is the largest charter chain owned in the United States is owned by an imam from the Middle East. Well, I can understand why there's not a whole lot more restrictions on them. Because I, I don't, they, they're like public schools. You, you can't paint them with a broad brush. There are some good ones and there are some horrible ones. There's some mid-grade and that's, that's the way public school system, I have a, a public school official coming on later, you know, because we're kind of gearing up for back mm -hmm. to school. And I told him, I said, I don't paint public school with the broad brush. I know there's some great ones. And I know there's some that is just survival right. for the teacher and the students quite often. So we, we don't do that. So I don't know where I land on the charter schools because um, it's a lot, kind of a lottery system. You don't pay tuition. It uh, doesn't depend on your zip code. Correct. And I'm kind of tired of, uh, in our public school, you bring everybody down. You're, you're, not, you're not bringing one group up. You know what I'm saying? I have someone very close to me who's says, teaching public schools, and, and a lot of teachers are quitting. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are. And, and you have, and this, 
I know how easily you are labeled these days. I'm scared to death what I say. But you have a lot of illegal children in there. It's not their fault, but they don't speak English. That's correct. And that's bringing the whole class down. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've got a charter school over here somewhere where <clears throat> you, you might move a little faster and you're not holding the whole class back on something like that. It, so I don't know where I believe. You know what? It's got to be a balance, though, Arthur. Yeah. With this new bill that um, the Speaker of the House, Richard Corcoran, bulldozed through, uh, we're, we're looking at some, some significant... Uh, disasters coming. First, now, what is it about? What's the bill about? Well, you know what? It wraps 55 bills in one. They wanted to pass, have the budget passed. So in order to do that, they put this, they wrapped it all into one. Yeah. House Bill 7069. Uh, and they are cutting so much of our public education funding, mm -hmm. and they're giving a lot to charter schools. They're actually romancing charter schools to come to Florida to open up shop. So they're taking money from our public schools, our traditional public schools, and tossing them in the charter school mm -hmm. ring. Now, Manny Diaz, who's another representative, he earns a six-figure income off of his charter schools. Now, is, are you talking about Washington, D.C.? Nope, I'm talking <clears throat> about our Florida legislature. Florida, okay. Mm -hmm. Florida legislature. So just remember that when the governor uh, race comes up, Richard Corcoran is planning on running, and he is not a friend of public education. So, so just he, remember that. So he owns a bunch of charter schools? His wife does. Mm -hmm. Yep, she owns a charter school. Well, this is what I don't understand about a charter school. Why are there not very stringent restrictions? Why on are them? there not? Because legislators. Because I could open up one, right? That's correct. Legislators own them. Mm -hmm. Who's making the law? You're making my blood pressure go up, girl. I'm sorry. Because Washington, D.C. does that to yes, me all the time. Do. Well, they vote on their own raises. Yes. For goodness sakes. So here's the deal with the charter schools. You can. Having some is okay, but not for them to come in and wipe the slate. So mm -hmm. the proposal now, this bill, what it proposes is that if there are schools that are failing, who are, they're in low income areas, they have D's and F scores based on the Florida standards assessment, mm -hmm. um, then a charter school could come in and take over that building and just bring in their own staff, and then they operate, yes, on a lottery. So they can p cherry pick who they want in that school. So you they tell- could, They could bring the grades up. Well, they could, but here's the thing. You have a neighborhood mm -hmm. of underachievers, mm -hmm. and that charter school is smack dab in the middle. Now you've removed their neighborhood school because you've brought in the charter to take over that facility. And these children around here might not necessarily get into that neighborhood school. Yeah, but it's not based on their zip code or anything else. Correct. So they can bring children from other parts mm -hmm. of the county to that school. But then where are these mm -hmm. children going to go who don't have parents as advocates for them? You know, in my opinion, if it's a charter school, it better be raising better be raising grades. It, it better prove. Uh, I don't think there should be a bad charter school. <laughs> but you know, there are. You I know, know there that are. the majority yeah. of the I F, went online. Yeah. The, the majority of the F schools were charter uh -huh. schools. Yeah. So, so is somebody making money yes, and they the kids are. are suffering. So so it's not the dream. It's not know, the panacea. No. Do you know what it is? When men's hearts are right with God, they do the right thing. And someone whose heart is not right with God will take advantage of this. If you, if you have a good Christian upright person and they, they know they're dealing with tax dollars, which is other people's money. They'll be a good steward. They, they would be a good steward and they probably have a school where the kids are, are really excelling. Right. Which is what we want. That's but the But you know, the, the really truthfully, and what I've said over and over again, mm -hmm. is that no, mat, no amount of testing and no amount of hammering students with information is going to make them smarter. Right. 
it's Absolutely. not going to cure what happens at home. Mm -hmm. It's not going to cure that they don't have food on the table. It's mm -hmm. not going to cure that we have a homeless population, mm -hmm. not just one or two homeless children, but we have a homeless population. And the teachers often have to act as social workers or mommy mm -hmm. and daddy because they don't get that at home. So yeah. where is that built into this big picture? It's, yeah. not. it's not. And that, by the grace of God, that mm -hmm. we have to reach out and show compassion before kids mm -hmm. get to school. And what what I have experienced this last year, substitute teaching, <laughs> is like, oh my goodness, I have a new appreciation. Got your eyes open. Of, yes, I have. Yes, and uh, you know, we, we really ought to pray for our teachers every day and those that are out there working with our kids. Because when I think of a single mom and all, and she might have the opportunity and she'll really try and she'll get in there and get her kid in a charter school that's, that, that would elevate them from a neighborhood school that's going nowhere because we, we know that the teachers unions don't like these. And yet um, you can have a really bad teacher, they can't even fire them. That's right. You know, so it's, it's very complex. Before we run out of time, I read in the paper about a, um, a new law that allows anyone to file objection to teaching materials. Now this is a blessing because some parents have discovered books with pornography right. in them practically and all. And it says in, in Florida, an unbiased hearing officer um, will consider when a parent or someone concerned instructional materials such as movies, textbooks, novels, and all this used mm -hmm. in public schools. There's so many things in public schools I don't think should be there. Oh my goodness, no. And I, I just, I met with our principal a couple of weeks ago and I said, these are the things that I noticed as a substitute teacher. And, um, and she said, well, that's not gonna be happening this next year. And I said, well, I am grateful. I'm so grateful because the information that students are watching mm -hmm. and, and even on, on campus computers that they should not be watching. I am so glad you're in there. I really am. Because your heart was there anyway. Yeah. Now, now you are in there, your mind, body and all. Um, but this is, and I've referred to a close relative of mine who is a teacher. Parents hardly ever come to a parent no, teacher. You're right. Shame on you. That, that's horrible. And so until the parents. Mm -hmm. Look at the materials. That's right. And uh, know what's going on. Uh, this unbiased officer is going to be sitting there with nothing to do. Yeah. And I think that's. Uh, well, you know, these days it's hard to get your hands on students' curriculum. Yes. Because it doesn't come home. They hide them. It, it stays in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All of the books stay in the mm -hmm. classroom. There's one more thing if we have time. Okay. Uh, it says schools gird for a role of religion because the First Amendment that government may not prevent the free exercise of religion is, is, practiced, uh, is not practiced in the school system. And uh, so, you know, they're going thinking, maybe he can take his Bible to school. And they talk about rosary beads and crosses and, and homework and prayer and all, uh, because that's a very important part of our whole uh, documents of freedom. Yeah, what I would encourage uh, parents to continue to push and their students to advocate for is to be able to have some sort of fellowship of Christian students on campus. Mm -hmm. Because if the Gay and Lesbian Student Education Network is active and alive mm -hmm. in our public schools, mm -hmm. middle school and high school, um, then we ought to be able to have... Yeah, uh, we're almost out of time, but I, I look back, uh, you know, and. Both of us cannot emphasize enough the parents. I remember when a teacher was, and my mother, if you got in trouble at school, the first thing, first thing she said, well, what did you do? Right. You know. Uh, the student. Yeah, she'd yeah. say to me, what did you do? Well, anyway, this teacher got really rude, really bad with me. And my mom went to school and, and she talked to her. Uh, parents need to be hands on like that and uh, need to know. And, I know a lot of you precious, precious grandparents are raising your grandchildren. And if I had to, honey, I'd do the same thing. And I pray that you'll get involved as well in their education. And the more parents get involved, the better it's going to be. We're out of time. But you stay with me because I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye.
Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. A few years ago, Bill and Gloria Gaither wrote a song stating, Tell it to your children and your children's children that Jesus must be Lord of their lives. It's a sweet song with a catchy rhythmic melody. However, the message of the song has more significance today than the day it was written. Do you make an effort to determine what is the worldview of your children or grandchildren? And if they are still very young, do you work to mold that view into a Christian worldview? Do they know there is only one true God? Do they know that Jesus is the only way of salvation and to heaven? Because if they're not taught by you, they live in a culture that is hell bent to destroy our fervently held Christian values. Society's message today states that there are many gods and many ways, all leading to the same eternal loveliness. However, if you believe the scripture is without error and that Jesus is truly the way, the truth, and the life, then that is the message to believe and follow. There are many instances and situations in life requiring and as a matter of fact, demanding only one way. <clears throat> now, for more than 20 years, I flew each weekend throughout the United States to fulfill a variety of speaking engagements. As an airline passenger, I just hoped and prayed to get to my destination safely. And I found comfort knowing that the pilot talked to the tower, receiving specific instructions about where and when to land. The air controller would tell my pilot the direction, the speed, the altitude, and which runway to use for a safe landing. I am forever thankful that I didn't tell the pilot, there are many, many ways into Tampa. Just choose one and good luck. Doesn't take a degree in social science to recognize the outright war against the Christian faith in our own nation. However, if the word of God is hidden in the hearts of our children, the scripture states that they won't sin against God. Like the Apostle John, I have no greater joy than this, to hear that my children are walking in the truth. As you consider everything else and your desire for your children, think about that. And remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.